Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm back in our labs in New York, and I'm checking out the Sony F3 once again. A couple of months ago, I was uh, starting an S-Log series and showing what S-Log could do in this camera, but then Sony came along and said we have new firmware on the way. Uh, they had a new firmware version 1.2, which is now loaded in the camera, which would change the way the camera uh, works in S-Log. So I thought I'd go ahead and wait till that new firmware was out, and now I'm back to the video series once again. So thanks for being patient with that. So what am I looking at here? It's the, the camera, of, cor of course, the F3 with version 1.2 firmware. I got a DSD Labs chart, 18, 18 steps of gray on that. Uh, back here I have my uh, leader scope and a monitor. And then finally on top of the camera I have the Gemini uh, 444 video recorder from Convergent Design. So this is actually taking a uh, 444 uh, S-Log video feed out of my camera, so which we'll use uh, both as a recorder, but in this case as a way of monitoring that S-Log feed while we look at our scopes, which are seeing the uh, 422 feed out of the camera. All right, so uh, what's happening in the new firmware? What's the big change? Well, uh, first off, S-Log. What's happened with S-Log? Well, I'm gonna go into menus here and turn off my uh, monitor LUT. So on the scopes, we can see uh, what's going on. And from my analysis, basically not much has changed at all. In fact, the curves are identical to what I saw before. Uh, but a couple of people did note uh, that uh, my curve, I marked the curve incorrectly. The middle gray value was too high. It was a stop up. So I want to just show you here uh, the new, uh, a new curve with the middle gray placed between 30 and 40%, which is what the Sony S-Log white paper suggests, uh, allowing for six stops above, six, six stops below. This is just an accurate and updated information, but otherwise S-Log is the same between uh, the, the, in the earlier ver, for, firmware version and the newer firmware version, it's the same as, as it was. So an important note. So what else is going on in the, in the firmware? What was the big thing? Well, it was the inclusion of something called exposure index mode. Uh, basically, this is a mode in the camera that lets me, while I'm uh, recording an S-Log, to monitor with a higher exposure, a, a higher ISO, which doesn't actually affect my S-Log feed at all. Basically, it's simulating a post push or post exposure change on my feed in the camera. So this is an important thing if you want to keep the cleanest uh, uh, feed from the, from the camera, but, but monitor uh, with a brighter signal so you know what you're actually going to get in post. So this is an important option. And here's how you turn it on. I go in the menus. I'll go ahead and turn my LUT back on. It applies that look over a lookup table. So you need a lookup table enabled. And then I'm going to go down. Uh, I'm going to use the, the 709 800% a lookup table, which is normal. And then I'll turn on my EI mode, exposure index mode. And then I can select from a variety of exposure indexes from 800 to 3200. And if you see what that does when I adjust it, uh, you'll see it's actually pushing the output up or down. There it goes, up and down. Uh, this is, a, this is a, uh, a way of, again, monitoring with that. But uh, as I did that again at 800 and then 3200, uh, you'll notice on the Gemini, which is getting the 444 feed, that when I adjust these numbers, nothing actually is changing it at all. S-Log remains the same. This is an important distinction because before, I had, when, I, when I was increasing my gain on the camera, it actually affected S-Log. I can still do this though if I prefer to. I can basically go ahead and turn off the EI mode, leave the menu here, and just add in gain. And you'll see it is actually adding gain in both the scope behind me there and also in the Gemini. So it's all, it's a very different way of working. Uh, this might be with the gain internally, maybe a little easier in post on you to have the gain already loaded in there, or you may want the clean signal and use the EI mode. So important options and, and important to understand with, this, with the uh, Sony camera right now. So that's the real change that happened in the firmware. Everything else is basically the same. The next part of the series, we're gonna go outside and shoot some highlights and really show what S-Log can do in terms, of the in terms of dynamic range and also in the way that the camera handles colors and highlights. This is a very important uh, uh, attribute of S-Log to me is how the camera can handle highlight color ranges and how it does a, a better job, in my opinion, in handling color. So we'll check that out. And then finally, we're gonna look at uh, building LUTs for the uh, camera internally with the CVP file editor and also building LUTs externally that we can use to, uh, say, apply a LUT in post to adjust for uh, exposure index modes I may have used in the camera. Say I'm shooting 1600 
uh, EI and the camera, I want to be able to achieve that same thing in post easily. So I can create LUTs for that application as well. Uh, that's it for now. Stay tuned for the other videos in the series. We'll try to get them up, get them up as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you soon.